Kyle Shanahan and uh, John Lynch, they're clearly enjoying this virtual draft, I think, more than most people are. But again, San Francisco plays in the toughest division, arguably, in the NFL right now, the NFC West. As we said, they lost Emmanuel Sanders. There are some concerns about offensive line as well. But the pick is in. Let us see what San Francisco did. They moved one slot back so Tampa could move up. Where is San Francisco going? With the 14th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Javon Kinlaw, defensive tackle, South Carolina. Well, perhaps another surprise, but Javon Kinlaw is one hell of a football player. His story is also amazing, but what you need to know about him is how he grew up. He split time between his mother and father in Goose Creek, South Carolina, as well as in Washington, D.C., and he spent some of that youth homeless in the nation's capital where he would ride the metro because either it was colder than it was inside or hotter than it was outside. And he has been a remarkable story talking about the things that he went through as a kid. He related to that sometimes in Washington DC walking over dead bodies to get to where he lived. Todd McShay said he showed up at the Senior Bowl, didn't even work out and didn't even play rather, just went through some drills and made a bunch of money. And there you see the reaction of his father. Javon Kinlaw is now a member of the San Francisco 49ers. His story is absolutely remarkable. Booger, his story is incredible, as is what we saw on the field at South Carolina. Without a doubt, you talk about the rich getting richer. He reminds me a lot of Richard Seymour. Long, big, and powerful and the San Francisco 49ers are going to love it. Can he play with leverage? When you're a tall player, you got to be able to play with leverage, extend your arms, control the offensive lineman. He can do it with the best of them. Like one of the, the guys that I played with a long time ago, Richard Seymour, doing the same thing. Defensive lineman being able to use both hands to control the offensive lineman. They do it well, but this is now a passing league. Can you be a three down player? Can you rush the passer? Javon Kinlaw showed outstanding pass rush ability and power, especially at the senior bowl. Just like Richard Seymour, long arms, long levers. He can do it inside. And dare I say, John Lynch, they traded away DeForest Buckner. Now they get to Javon Kinlaw Mel, and this defensive line is going to be dominant once again. Boog, talent-wise, 6'5", 324. Remember, he was 340 early on, managed his weight, got it down to 324, played through a hip injury in 2018. This past year, first five, six games, he was dominant. Actually, five sacks in the first six games, only one the rest of the way. And that's where Derrick Brown, week in and week out, was dominant. Ken Law had that great start. Then teams adjusted, and he wasn't quite as much of a factor, but he's got incredibly long arms, huge hands, DJ. Physically, if you could draw up a defensive tackle, Javon Kinlaw would be that guy. Yeah, he reminded me of Marcus Stroud when I watched him, Mel. And this is somebody, when you put on the Georgia game and the Alabama game, the best opponents they've played, he was dominant against those quality offensive lines. So that's what jumped out to me. And, Lewis, I just add one thing here with this selection. This is, this is outstanding by John Lynch. You trade to Forrest Buckner, you get the 13th pick. You trade back to 14, get an extra pick, and you replace DeForest Buckner at the same position with a younger, cheaper player. Uh, John Lynch putting that Stanford education to good use. Without a doubt, look, it's great value for them. It's smart team building, and they're staying true to who they are, DJ. They're a team that likes to build it front to back, inside out, on the defensive side of the football in particular. And Javon Kinlaw, you're right. When he went up against the best offensive lines in college football, that's when he really raised his level. And it wasn't just at the point of attack. It was chasing people down the field. I remember in that Alabama game, just seeing him run downfield and just put haymakers on running backs, catching the ball out of the backfield with his extra effort. That's the kind of thing that epitomizes San Francisco this year, and he's going to fit right in very well. Well, Dad is feeling it right now for the Kinlaws. And, oh, by the way, sometimes things just work out perfectly. Kinlaw actually wanted to go to San Francisco, saying they're just a wonderful group of guys, a talented group that works together. They work together for the same goal, not individual achievements, and that's to get the win at the end of the day. That's something I want to be a part of. Well, guess what, Javon? You are a part of it. Javon Kinlaw, now a San Francisco 49er. The San Francisco 49ers move back and may end up getting the, the guy they wanted in the 13th spot anyway. Javon Kinlaw 
the defensive tackle out of South Carolina, probably the best pass rushing interior lineman in this class. Former South Carolina defensive tackle Javon Kinlaw has made a career of overcoming obstacles. Battling homelessness as a youth, Kinlaw had every reason to make excuses. But he kept his chin up, his eyes on the prize, and worked relentlessly to become the player he is today. The 6'5", 324-pound defensive tackle makes his presence known in the trenches. He's been described as having all the tools in the toolbox. As Kinlaw is accustomed to facing double teams in the SEC, making an impact and collapsing the pocket could very well come naturally for him at the next level. I guess we're just going to have to sharpie in a defensive lineman going first to the 49ers every year. Death, taxes, and John Lynch taking a defensive lineman in the first round of the draft are the three assurances you get in life. Um, no, he was the next best guy. I think he's probably closer to Derek Brown's ability to penetrate as any. And you touched on this. Over the past two years, he's been the best interior defensive lineman as a pass rusher. Jordan Elliott out of Missouri is probably the next one uh, after him. But I think when you look at the fit, they lost Buckner. They now replaced him with Kinlaw. That's just what John Lynch believes. He believes in building offenses and defenses from the inside out. Uh, so he always starts up from the offensive defensive line. When they find a player of this sort of value at this spot, they go out and get him. Now the next thing they're gonna have to address is obviously wide receiver, but this is a good fit for a team that I think wants to reload, wants to continue to put pressure on opponents with that defensive front. I think you gotta remember John Lynch played in Tampa Bay with Warren Sapp up front, you know, clogging a lot of that middle, one of the best uh, interior defensive linemen we've seen in some time. So clearly he bought into that philosophy, saw the success there, brought it to the front office with him there too. I thought maybe it was there was a chance they could take a wide receiver there. They lost Emmanuel Sanders as well. But again, the philosophy, and this is where I think the continuity of bringing and Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch together where they're on the same page and there's no confusion about what they want to be, I think that's where you're seeing play out. The game plan is there. They want to stay strong in the middle, and that's exactly what they got. And I, I think there's a significant drop-off in edge rushers from Chase Young and everybody else. Right. I think the, the drop-off is there that much. Derek Brown's a phenomenal player, but so is Kinlaw. So I think there's pretty good value well, here, down here. Yeah, but the problem is now after these two, there's a, a significant right. drop-off as far as the defensive tackle spot. So I think they needed to get their guy. And, and still, we, we look at what John Lynch has done before. He's convinced teams that he was going to take a player, and he's moved back one spot, still gotten his guy in the past. He did that with Solomon, Solomon Thomas and the Bears with Ryan Pace and Mitchell Trubisky. I want to bring uh, Pete Prisco in here. Pete, what's the grade? Your worst grade so far is a B minus. And this is a B minus. It's not that I don't like Kinlaw. There's a couple things not to like. He plays high at times, I think, uh, but he has the potential to be a dominant player like Chris Jones. He reminds me of Chris Jones of the Chiefs. My concern here is you traded away DeForest Buckner essentially to get Javon Kinlaw because you traded for this pick. Uh, and is that a be is he a better player? A and then B. Are you admitting your mistake on Solomon Thomas, who you drafted a couple years ago, because he's on that defensive line as well? So, couple concerns there. I understand it. I think he has a chance to be really good. And we know the 49ers love defensive linemen, but cornerback major concern. Wide receiver still a concern. Well, P, you get him cheaper. I mean, that's the biggest difference yeah. here. It's not about a veteran guy who, yeah, maybe proven to some degree, but he's a lot more expensive than what Javon Kinlock comes in at. I mean, there's an economics to this. I, I get that, Brady, but you also don't know if he's nearly going to be close to being as good as Buckner either. I mean, that's the concern there. I understand the economics of it, but you're, again, you're taking a chance. And are they admitting their mistake on Solomon Thomas? I mean, that's remember they sat there and they took Solomon Thomas after that move when they went up when the Bears went up to get Trubisky, uh, and everybody thought he would be a star. It hasn't quite worked out that way. He played better last season, but I would say this: if they thought so much of Divorce Buckner, they wouldn't trade him in the first place, Pete. So. <laughs> I guess True. that's it for Pete. <laughs> <laughs>
and 176 to Minnesota for the 25th overall pick. And what the 49ers were doing was, in this deep, wide receiver class, they need to strengthen that position. They lost Emmanuel Sanders in free agency. Their only two healthy wide receivers right now are Debo Samuel and Kendrick Bourne. Jalen Hurd is coming back off injury last year's rookie. He could wind up playing tight end. They need wide receiver help. There's a lot of wide receivers out there, and the 49ers just have made the move right now to trade all those picks up to Minnesota's spot to take a wide receiver here, I believe. All right, Adam, thanks very much. We appreciate that. So there you see Kyle Shanahan and company in a very cozy confine working through the virtual draft. But again, they give up that 31st pick, so they move up, what, five slots uh, here to 25, or six slots, rather, uh, to take the, the 25th overall pick here as uh, John Lynch also trying to figure out. It does seem like wide receiver would be the play here, right, Daniel Jeremiah? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. My highest rated receiver that's left is Brandon Ayuk from Arizona State, uh, who I think is outstanding. Another one that is outstanding after the catch. He's been working out with TJ Hushmanzada, and TJ told me he reminded him a lot of Chad Johnson, who he played with there in Cincinnati. So that's high praise for Brandon Ayuk. I think he'd be a great fit in that offense. All right, Daniel, thanks. So the pick is in. San Francisco has moved up from 31 to 25. Let's see where they're going Come on. with another first-round pick. The Minnesota Vikings have traded the 25th pick to the San Francisco 49ers. With the 25th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver, Arizona State. All right, Daniel Jeremiah, nicely done. Brandon Ayuk is indeed the selection, so that's the second straight year. Forks up, Herm Edwards, that an Arizona State Sun Devil wide receiver is gone in the first round. Nikhil Harry went there a year ago when he went into the, I believe, the last pick to the New England Patriots. He's from Reno, Nevada. He transferred uh, from Sierra College. But what's really interesting about Brandon Ayuk is the fact that he's basically just about six feet tall, but his Wingspan is 81 inches. Let's put that in comparison, Michael Irvin. Megatron was 6'5", Calvin Johnson. He had an 82-inch wingspan. This guy is five inches shorter, and his wingspan is only one inch less. How is that possible? I tell you, it's a blessing from God to have that reach. I call that an area code wide receiver. You put the phone anywhere, you put the ball anywhere in the area code, and he will make that play. And you match him up. You give Kyle Shanahan, that genius of an offensive mind, a guy like Brandon Ayuk, who can make plays with the ball, as you're watching right here on the screen. I mean, it's going to be a great combination to put with that young group they have in San Francisco. Yeah, when you think about Brandon Ayuk, just think about this stat right here. His yards after catch per reception was better than even Henry Ruggs III. This guy is a big playmaker, a big play waiting to happen. They got him the ball on wide receiver screens as well as anybody in college football, and he was able to make guys miss and take it the distance. He was one of the best double move route runners in the NFL as well, a guy who's, who also can return punts and really break the game open that way. This is a great pick for the San Francisco 49ers and gives them that home run hitter that they need all right so that's the sixth wide receiver in the first round Kyle Shanahan seems to be very happy about the fact that Brandon Ayuk is now a member of the San Francisco 49ers John Lynch pleased as well we'll see if the Niner fan base will be pleased when they see Ayuk on the field Niners trade up to number 25 overall, and they draft Brandon Ayuk out of Arizona State. Uh, what do we know about this kid? He seems like a home run threat. No, that's what he is. I mean, he averages 18 yards per reception this past season. The only concern a little bit is, well, he may have been a one-hit wonder, but if you really go back a couple years ago and watch, I mean, look, Nikhil Harry was the featured wide receiver. Ayuk kind of played that number two role, and now we see him really take off this past season. He's a long strider. I think the biggest question or concern you might have is how much press man-to-man -man coverage uh, did he really play against, and how is he, he going to handle that at the next level? Either way, 
Kyle Shanahan, John Lynch, they have a really good feel for these guys, one developing them, but also find them like they did Debo Samuel in the draft last year. Yeah, and if you have a young player like this, maybe formationally, motion, move them around a little bit to try to dodge some of those potential press coverages early on, you can do some things to mask for that. But I think the big play, uh, big play potential is there, and it's clearly it's a position of need with them losing Emmanuel Sanders to the Saints. I think this is a perfect fit. Uh, let's bring in Pete Prisco. Uh, Pete knows a lot Sun about Devil, baby. Brandon right. Ayuk. Yeah, yeah, Pete wasn't high on the uh, the Patriots taking Nikhil Harry in the first round last year. That hasn't Where's, worked out. Oh, oh, there there it is. the fight song. Shoot the fight song. <laughs> Harvard of the West, baby. The Harvard of the West. We're getting players drafted again. We love it. Look, I, I love this kid. It's a B-plus grade. In his offense, he's going to be phenomenal. Uh, I think they're going to move him around like you said. He's only scratching the surface. I mean, he, when he catches the ball, he takes off and boom, he's gone. I love this kid. He's a much better player than Nikhil Harry, who the Patriots drafted in the first round last year. And you know what else? Every personnel guy I talked to said what a great kid he is. He loves the game. He learns it. He will be an effective player in that offense. That is six wide receivers off the board now, Brady. Yeah, and I think if you're looking at this offense and maybe some of the things that was missing, in particular in the passing game, it was some of those big plays. They've got Marquise Goodwin. We've heard rumors that he potentially is on the trade blocks, and so maybe there's some running on the wall there replacing Goodwin, a speedy, big play wide receiver within the offense, with a younger guy who's got very similar abilities. So uh, looking forward to seeing how Kyle Shanahan is going to mix in Brandon Ayuk into this, in, into this system. I think Debo Samuel is going to become you know, that kind of go-to guy at the wide receiver spot. Obviously, Kittle is still their best target in the passing game, but then Ayuk is going to be able to take the top off the of defense and really force teams to have to be concerned about that in the future. You won't be able to hunker down on Kittle as much as you used to. D. Ford, the franchise tag pass rusher for the Kansas City Chiefs, is on his way to the San Francisco 49ers in exchange for a 2020 second round pick, another blockbuster trade in a day where trades are the big story here. All right, so it's going to be Sanders in a fifth round pick going from Denver to San Francisco in exchange for a third and fourth round pick going back to Denver here. So the Broncos pick up some draft capital in exchange for a guy who, you know, he's still producing, but he's on the back end of his career. Tell us. The Washington Redskins are on the clock. Next have agreed to send their Pro Bowl tackle Trent Williams to the San Francisco 49ers for a fifth round pick in this draft and a third round pick next year. Two picks back to the Washington Redskins. One they'll be using today. The 49ers now get a left tackle. And keep in mind, Kyle Shanahan drafted Trent Williams in Washington before, has a history with him. And keep in mind this too, Trey. Kyle Shanahan's father once traded for a Pro Bowl left tackle, Gary Zimmerman, who helped Denver win a Super Bowl. Trent Williams is the same age that Gary Zimmerman was when Denver traded for Zimmerman, been to the same number of Pro Bowls as Zimmerman, and now Kyle Shanahan has pulled a page from his father's playbook, trading for his own left tackle that he knows very well Trent Williams' holdout will end. He will play in San Francisco this year under his current contract. Adam, great stuff there. By the way, not a surprise. The Zimmerman trade is fascinating. He was on the all-decade team for two decades. That's, that's how good he was as a player. Uh, Lewis, this makes all the sense in the world, right? Because there are still some question marks about Joe Staley and whether or not he's going to come back from San Francisco. They went Javon Kinlaw defensive side of the ball, the tackle in the first round. They got Brandon Ayuk out of Arizona State. O-line was a need, and now they get one of the best in the business. No question about it, Trey. Look, Trent Williams is someone, again, who has familiarity with Kyle Shanahan, you know, as Adam Schefter go ahead and alluded to. And that's, those are the kind of deals that make sense in this environment in particular, where you don't have person-to-person -person contact, but you have history with someone like this. And Trent Williams, make no mistake about it, is one of the best athletes in the NFL, regardless of position. 
He truly is. Now, you pair him with Mike McGlinchey, assuming that Joe Staley, you know, at some point in time is going to move on. Now you have two bookends. Once again, he fits right in with that zone blocking scheme because of his athleticism. He can be one of the best left tackles in the NFL when he is dialed in. And this will make that running game even more dominant than it already was, if you can imagine that. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous pickup for Kyle Shanahan. You know they're going to continue to pound the rock like they did all the way to that 10-point lead in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. So we'll see what happens there. Again, Adam Schefter with the breaking news. Trent Williams is now a member of the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, let's go back to Adam Schefter because he is a veritable fountain of information. Adam, what do you got? <laughs> Well, thanks, Trey. It turns out the 49ers and Redskins have been discussing this deal for a few days. They were able to finalize it this morning in exchange for a third-round pick next year and a fifth-round pick this year that the Redskins will be using later today. And here's what set into motion that whole trade discussion. It turns out that the 49ers' six-time Pro Bowl offensive tackle, a member of the NFL All-Decade team, Joe Staley, is expected to retire due to health concerns. He told the 49ers in advance of the draft, which put into motion their pursuit of Trent Williams in recent days, culminating in the agreement that they struck with the Washington Redskins this morning as the draft was getting underway. And so the Washington Redskins will trade Trent Williams to San Francisco, who loses Joe Staley. Joe Staley out, Trent Williams in, Trey. It's on the move, and he's a pretty good guy. Apparently, Trent Williams has just been traded to the San Francisco 49ers. Rich getting richer in the trenches. Uh, JJ, what do you make of this? We talked about this yesterday. Okay, you got to give something up for him, but now you got to give him a big deal. Do you like this for the 49ers? Do you like the fit here? And is this really send notice to everybody else this division? Good luck. Okay, so the Niners are going to have to figure out what they're going to do with the cap here in order to have him, and that's an issue that they can face a little bit down the road. Obviously, John Lynch can get creative here. The other thing that this signals is, is this the end of Joe Staley's uh, career? Now, he had been waiting to announce his retirement if he was going to retire. We were waiting to hear what he was going to do in 2020 and beyond. And so I don't know if they're going to have room for Trent Williams and Joe Staley. If they certainly don't seem to have it uh, in the salary cap area. And then as far as compensation right now, it's being reported a fifth round pick this year and a third round pick next year. That's about as good a value as Washington was going to get at this point uh, in the draft. We knew Trent Williams was not going to come back and play for Washington. They were never getting a second round pick. They started to overplay their hand and really the 49ers were the last team out there. So again, is this the end of Joe Staley in San Francisco? How are they going to figure it out with the cap? They obviously plan to. Uh, I would expect Trent Williams certainly to be the left tackle of the 49ers well into the future. Yeah, that Niners grouping did do a great job of surviving attrition last year. A couple injuries to McGlinchey, a couple injuries to Staley. But with the addition of Trent Williams, Pete, I'll go your way. As it was said, fifth rounder this year, third next. It's a seven-time Pro Bowler trying to shore up your offensive line here. When you look at this, Pete, I mean, we could wax poetic about John Lynch and the job he's doing, but just another fantastic move from the general manager. Yeah, and there was uh, rumblings yesterday that they had already worked out a deal with the Vikings, and then when the Vikings drafted Ezra Cleveland, they kind of backed out of that deal. It was for uh, a third last this year and a fourth next year, and it didn't work out that way. Now they pedal into the 49ers. And look, I think J.J. hit it. What does this say about Joe Staley? If Joe Staley's back on the roster, what do they do? Uh, so I think they probably got word from Joe Staley that he's not going to play, uh, maybe will retire, and that means that Trent Williams will be your left tackle. But now you got to work out a long-term deal with him. Uh, he wants to be paid. He wasn't happy in Washington. And by the way, he's not a kid anymore either and hasn't played in a while. So it's not like he's going to walk in and be this all-world left tackle. He's got to get back into playing shape A, get back to being a good player again, and he's not a kid anymore. That's a great point. And Brady, maybe start by following up on that and then go whatever you want on this. Do you think the guy will be able to kick the rust off very quickly if they need him to come in and fill Staley's shoes? This is a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. They were in the game last year. How much and how quickly can he be ready, and do you like this deal overall? Well, with the shortened offseason, I think the biggest question mark is, is the scheme. But again, remember, if you go back to Kyle Shanahan's roots, he was in Washington over the period of Trent Williams. So he's going to be familiar with the system. That's not going to be an issue. I have no reservations about our veteran guys shaking off rust. These guys know how to play, and especially Trent Williams. I think he can prepare himself for this upcoming season. I love the move by the Redskins. And I think when you look at what they've been able to accomplish so far in this draft, 
getting guys who are impact players in the first round, Javon Kinlaw, as well as Brandon Ayuk. They couldn't, you know, they couldn't find necessarily a tackle that they could draft at this point, I think, that they could plug in or view as the potential replacement to Joe Staley. So now you get that in Trent Williams. The 49ers are in a win-now mode. I love that. I love how John Lynch continues to build on each side of the ball through the trenches. Couldn't do it in the draft of the tackle spot at this point. He does it with a trade. So I like the aggressiveness. I think this is a step that helps San Francisco find a way to get back to the Super Bowl next season. Let's give it up for Colton McKivitz, the tackle out of West Virginia going to San Francisco because Colton, that's his dad. His dad is very popular in the West Virginia area because he makes those raccoon skin and sometimes coyote caps. And he's already saying that he's going to sort of help Colton market. And Colton's like, no, 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 no. Dad thinks he's getting a $35,000 salary to mow my grass and watch the dogs, maybe on the second contract. What's he going to need to get that second contract for his dad? I'll tell you what, Trey, that hat, I can't stop staring at that hat. That, that's uh, staring right into my soul with that thing on his head. Uh, look, this is a player that's real nasty. Uh, he plays a little bit high, a little bit upright, but he collects knockdowns about as much or more than any lineman in this draft. He's not a phenomenal athlete, but reminds me a lot of a guy like Dennis Kelly. If you followed his career, beginning with the Philadelphia Eagles and then going on to the Tennessee Titans, when you're big, strong, and tough, you cover up some of those deficiencies. You hang around this league for a very long time. And by the looks of his father, I'm not going to say anything else that would be negative. Yeah, I would say him, and you want to make sure you never say anything bad about DeAndre Swift, because you saw Darren Swift and how yoked he was. I think those are the two guys that are winning dad strength so far in this draft. But we'll see what Colton McKivitz can be. Again, you have San Francisco making this pick, uh, and they've also made the big trade to get Trent Williams. So as we take a look, at what the San Francisco 49ers have done. They went with that guy who should be first off the bus, speaking of putting the fear in people, Javon Kinlaw, the defensive tackle out of South Carolina, uh, with their first pick in the first round. Then they get Brandon Ayuk, the wide receiver, who has that 81-inch wingspan at six feet, which is just remarkable. And then this fifth-round pick is Colton McKivitz. And for more on how they acquired this fifth-round pick, yeah. let's go back to Adam Schefter. Adam, I sense a theme here in what we were just talking about. Yeah. Well, Trey, the 49ers have traded Matt Breida, the running back to the Miami Dolphins, for that fifth-round pick. The Dolphins had talked to the Rams earlier this offseason about trading for Todd Gurley and decided not to. They spoke to the Jaguars about trading for Leonard Fournette and decided not to. But today, the Dolphins decided to send a fifth-round pick to the 49ers in exchange for Matt Breida. And the 49ers have manipulated themselves all around the draft board. They came into this draft without picks in the second, third, and fourth rounds. They traded their fifth round pick in this draft to Washington for Trent Williams because Joe Staley, in part, was retiring. And then today they make another trade of Matt Breida sending him to the Dolphins, who they'll match with Jordan Howard, who they signed in free agency. So the Dolphins' new backfield is Jordan Howard and Matt Breida. The 49ers get another offensive tackle to match with Trent Williams and Mike McGlinchey, Trey. Yeah, and Adam, again, that, that commodity of picks in rounds four through seven, 65% of your team is built up four through seven, and then, of course, through undrafted free agency. That's why San Francisco has been wheeling and dealing. Plays out. Meanwhile, we move on to the 49ers selection, and it's Charlie Werner, the tight end Daniel out of Georgia. Yeah, and a lot of these tight ends, Trey, you're hoping you can get some just willingness in the run game. Charlie Werner is outstanding as a run blocker. You can run right behind him at the point of attack. You can also play him off the ball. You use him on wham blocks. They'll use him to crash and do a lot of different things. He's outstanding in space to latch and control. Hasn't been ultra involved in the passing game, but somebody that also is a phenomenal special teams player. is going to be one of the best special teams players in this draft. So he's going to have a role as somebody that can block and somebody that's going to cover kicks. All right, we'll see what happens with him as you see Werner working the middle of the field there against Florida.
look at Jawan Jennings, who is now off the board, going to San Francisco in the seventh round. His father played football at North Alabama. His sister, Alexis, played college basketball at Kentucky and South Carolina. His brother, Kendall, played junior college basketball. But we're talking about a guy, Daniel, and Jawan Jennings, who has had discipline issues with not one but two staffs at Tennessee. Yeah, but when you when you watch him on the field, Trey, I, I know the knock on this kid on the field is the speed. He ran a 4.72 at the combine. He does not separate very well. But if you're looking for a big slot, that's what you have right here. And the physicality shows up on these 50-50 balls. They just pitch it up to him, let him go get it down in the red zone. They'll use him as a wildcat quarterback. He breaks tackles, just very physical and strong with outstanding hands. He's also really good on punt coverage in that area. So the speed is a major concern on the field, Trey. But at this point in time, he does something really well. He's a big physical slot. And we take a look at the Niners pick page again. They've been very active this entire weekend, including the bombshell trade that Adam Schefter uh, told us about with the Washington Redskins getting Trent Williams for a third and a fifth. It shows you how bad Trent Williams wanted to get out of there. They knew that he was leaving. They couldn't get much for him in return because Trent Williams is an unbelievable player. They get Javon Kinlaw, Brandon Ayuk, Colton McKivitz, uh, Charlie Warner, the tight end out of Georgia, and, of course, Jawan Jennings now, the wide receiver out of Tennessee. NFL draft the 2020 version is indeed in the books it's the first ever virtual draft but believe me there were real emotions as 255 young men have brand new football homes and a few veterans do as well biggest name on the move on Saturday was Trent Williams his saga is finally over in DC he was traded from the Redskins to the 49ers for a pair of picks the seven time pro bowler missed all of last season with a health scare one which cost the team the trust of the pro bowl left tackle Niners made this move because six time pro bowler Joe Staley announced his retirement retirement on Saturday after 13 seasons so here's how the deal worked out the Niners gave up a fifth rounder this year with the Redskins turned in to keep Ismail a center out of San Diego State and also they tacked down a third round pick in the 2021 draft. For more on this, we welcome in our NFL media insider, Ian Rappaport. And Ian, this made sense on so many levels, starting with the Staley retirement on Saturday. But also, Niners coach Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator of the Redskins when they picked Trent Williams fourth overall in 2010. Seemed like a, a perfect matchup here, right? Yeah, and having someone with familiarity for uh, Trent Williams obviously was key. And finding a place that he wanted to go was key as well. Remember, the Minnesota Vikings were deep in talks with the Washington Redskins about a potential Trent Williams deal. That ended up getting scuttled late, late yesterday. And, of course, the Vikings ended up taking Ezra Cleveland, the tackle from Boise State, moving on there. And then it was all about the 49ers. And very quietly, the Niners and the Redskins, even given Kyle Shanahan's past and history in Washington and, of course, Dan Snyder's feelings about that situation, this still 
had a chance to happen earlier this morning. Two sides got together. They were basically in agreement on terms. A fifth rounder, a three next year. Trent Williams wanted to go here and a deal was done. And the reason why it got done, as you mentioned, at the Joe Staley retirement, the 49ers have known for several days they just needed to keep it quiet until Trent Williams came on board. Now, from one Pro Bowl left tackle to another Pro Bowl left tackle, and everyone, including me, can actually move on. <laughs> yes, you can, but don't go anywhere. I'm sure we'll tap that brain in a little while. So uh, Trent Williams, he has a history with his old new head coach, and he has a history with the cornerback as well, Richard Sherman. Remember this after the 2012 playoff loss, Redskins against the Seahawks. Uh, that slap actually cost him nearly an $8,000 fine. So Richard Sherman, one of the active guys on social media, he actually admitted that he's going to need a rematch at some point. Sermonator always doing his thing with the crying. I love it as well. That should be fun. I can't wait until Trent Williams starts pulling out toward the corner's way during that first practice in training camp. All right, for more on this, we welcome in our Pro Bowl receiver Steve Smith and Charles Davis as well. Charles, uh, kudos to John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan as well for b being able to pull this, uh, this move off to bring Trent Williams out to the left coast, right? No doubt about it. And uh, Trent and Richard Sherman, you know, look, Apollo ended up in Rocky's corner. So, you know, anything can happen. They'll, they'll be just fine. <laughs> but I think absolutely kudos to them. And that's them understanding their team. My guess is that they had very close contact with Joe Staley about are you planning on doing this? Are you leaning towards retirement in order to go ahead and make this move and have a seamless transition from one Pro Bowl left tackle to another Pro Bowl slash all pro left tackle? Trent Williams after you know not playing last year, body healing up, fresh start with a team that went to the Super Bowl. I expect him to be dominant right from day one. Well, they're going to have a few fresh faces out there. In addition to Trent Williams, they did pick up a pair of first-round picks. Javon Kinlaw, he's going to take the place of DeForest Buckner, who was traded to the Colts. Brandon Ayuk adds uh, more wide receiver depth along with Travis Benjamin. They did get rid of a pair of veterans in Marquise Goodwin, who was dealt to the Eagles. Matt Breida was traded to the Dolphins. So, Steve Smith, let's remember, this was a team that was a half quarter away from being crowned Super Bowl champions. Is it possible the 2020 version is actually better? I don't know if we can say they're pop, it, they're better, but they sure did restock, and they restocked with some good guys. Obviously, in the draft, they got some young, fresh legs at a cheaper price with a lot of longevity because Emmanuel Sanders, you know, time is running out for him. But then they got, you know, like you said, Staley retires, and then they get Trent Williams. Man, it's, it just keeps getting better and better for John Lynch and um, Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers, and they're doing it the right way, and they're doing it very well. Well, they got a kid in Brandon Ayuk out of Arizona State that can help him not only as a wide receiver but as a return man as well. He was one of a half dozen receivers taken in round one back on Thursday night.